So this month we're going to be talking about Paradise Island. And that's the, the reason I named that is because we could all be living on Paradise Island. Don't that make you want to go to Bahama Breeze and eat some jerk chicken and pasta and swim in a virgin pina colada? Team Smalley, I'm so thankful y'all are here. Thank you so much. They drove all the way from Augusta. Y'all are really awesome. Thank you. And then we've got people here that drove six hours. Girls, thank you. I love our visitors. So I'm going to title this today, A Love That Loves to Give. A Love That Loves... I always try to think of like the coolest titles. You know what I'm saying? Because I need something that's going to grab me. Now, I know that one ain't so fun. Because y'all like, ugh. A love that loves to give. You know, I walk around my house sometimes, and I just belt all singing. You know, I'm just like, and I don't sing anything small. Like, it's like in my house, Kingston is asleep, and I'm like, I love you, Jesus. Did I scare y'all just now? I sing it from my toes. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. You know why I can sing that? Because when I was walking through devastation, when I wasn't living on Paradise Island. How many of you feel like you've been living on Hell Island? Come on, somebody. Be honest. You feel like you've been living on Hell Island. Why do you feel like you've been living on Hell Island? Huh? Let's talk. Unforgiveness? Huh? Children. Ha, ha, ha. You had them. I'm living in hell because of these kids. I understand. It's just a season. They're going to be gone someday. What else? Huh? Caregiving? Just doggone tired. Tired of the same old. It's tired of seeing all of these people on social media. They got famous on TikTok. And now these little children are living in mansions. Y'all, there is a condo downtown. My, my girl Dion is a realtor. There's, I had this moment where I thought I wanted to get me on penthouse. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to move to the 24th floor. I was dreaming. It's like a million dollars. Did y'all know that? It's like a million dollars for two bedroom. No backyard. I got to walk downstairs to get in the garage to go to my car. I ain't gonna enjoy the condo because I ain't doing all that. But here's the key. Because I'm looking for Paradise Island in Florida floor windows. Huh? Dion said, I got the perfect one for you. However, it smells like pot. I said, in my condo? She said, no, everywhere you walk in that building. I said, why? She said, everybody smokes pot? I was like, but why? In a million dollar building. Because the TikToks have gone viral. And nowadays, we look for our joy and happiness in comparison to people on TikTok. The messier you are, the more followers you're going to have. Being famous on social media is like being rich in Monopoly money. If you ain't got no character, it don't matter how much money you got, baby. You still got to smoke the Mary Jane to find your peace. You ain't even enjoying your mansion because you eat and you can't even fit in your, in your elevator no more. Because there ain't no peace. Why? Because we're looking at things, people, places, and things. And most of all, we're listening to what other people think about us. 
you got all the money in the world, and when you get, you, you're still unhappy. The higher you go, the more devil's going to be around you. You're going to still be laying in your bed at night. Man, what did I do? What, what, what could I have done different? Why? Because if you don't learn to get your inside right, then the outside is going to be tore up from the floor, but it don't matter how much money you have. It don't matter if your husband's got a six-pack and you got a two. You can put all the hair you want. You can put all the Botox in your face. You can get some lip fillers to make your lips need their own zip code. You can go get you a BMLI, whatever that thing is. You can snatch your waist till you can't breathe. But if you're miserable, if your heart is ugly, you is ugly. Woo. I just wore myself out that one. That was a lot. Why? Because as I'm talking, I'm thinking. My patterns. My patterns. God, what are my patterns? Instead of looking at things I got to fix, I got to start saying, God, do something internal. See, the problem, the reason we don't fix the internal is because it takes time. And we are a microwave generation. We want it now. We are judging our relationship goals off the bachelorette and the bachelor. And the finding love. Right? And the enemy is saying, <laughs> I know some of your idiosyncrasies. I know there's some areas you never dealt with. I know there's some daddy issues, some mama issues. I know your ex kept telling you, girl, ain't nobody gonna ever love you with your five rolls. And now, what are you doing? Walking through life thinking, ain't nobody going to ever love me. And so I got to reach, 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 reach to try to fill voids on the inside of me. No matter how educated, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people ultimately tells it all. Integrity is everything. You fall in love with their charisma, but you got to live with their character. So let me break this down for you because I'm about to help y'all like, gosh, Kim, Jesus. If you do the two things I'm about to tell you in this sermon, you ain't never going to have to stalk Kim in his phone another day in your life. You ain't never going to walk around one day up and one day down. Y'all know those people one day up, one day down, right? One day they happy, one day they sad. One day they, they, they live in like live in a lot of Valoka. The next day, they over there drinking and doing lives. It's because they haven't done these two things that I want to talk to you about. Paradise Island is a place that you can live without having to drink anything to live there. Paradise Island is a place that you can live even when you ain't got no bound chick going wow, wow, wrapping his arms or her arms around you. Whenever you got the God on the inside of you, every time you walk by the mirror, you're like, whoo. I see you. It's like one of them aunties. Y'all know I got those kind of friends around me. Girl, I see you. Oh! Every time you walk in a the room, they're like, oh, yes. That's my friends. Right? Because there's a love in me. Whenever you've got what I'm about to talk about inside of you, you don't have to put unfair expectations on your spouse or unfair expectation on your friends. When you get really healed on the inside of you, you can't even be around people that are gossiping. You can't even follow certain people. You unfollow people in real life and on social media. Why? This ain't sitting with my spirit. I got to do what God, Proverbs 4 says to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. Now that ain't, girl, Pastor Kim told me, I can't be hanging around with you no more. You full of drama. Well, you drama because you had to go tell her that. Proverbs 4 is to guard your heart from, in, from, from feeling uh, 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 offended, hurt, jealous, walking in unforgiveness. Right? Everybody get married but me. I'm always the bridesmaid. Well, maybe because you are top tier and they still working on it for you. 
But because we want to get ahead of God, we don't deal with the things on the inside of us, and that's why we keep going around cycles. Always talking about what's not right in our lives instead of focusing on what is right. Let me read Mark 12, 33 for y'all. It says, and there is something more important to God than all the sacrifices and burnt offerings. It's the commandment. Y'all know commandment means you ain't got no choice. Commandment is, I told you to do this, which means I've given you everything you need to do what I'm telling you to do. It's the commandment to constantly love God with every passion of your heart, with your every thought. That means when you're laying in bed and you're like, ugh, woe is me. All of a sudden you're saying, nope, I love you, Jesus. You're taking your focus off of whatever it is that's getting you stuck. And you're beginning to praise your way out. He says, with every passion of your heart, with your every thought, and with all your strength, and to love. Oh, to love your neighbor as yourself. This thing hit me different this time. Because love your neighbor, how many of us just say that, but we don't really think about what that means? Why you yelling at your waitress for something she didn't do, it was the cook's fault. And you're wondering why you can't get blessings in your life because you're not doing the two commandments. You got to deepen your relationship with God. Come on, somebody say, deepen my relationship with, with God. If you don't deepen your relationship with God, you won't be able to relate properly. That's why some of you ain't got no friends. I used to, if I had died, nobody would come to my funeral. I wouldn't even got a Facebook memorial page. Because I was so broken in here that I let other people's actions stop me. And you don't got to be mean and Corella DeVille to not let their actions stop you. It's that when I'm doing what the scripture says, I am so fulfilled and filled up with God that it don't matter what you do, I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to celebrate. I'm still going to support. A relationship has to be based on Honesty, which means you got to be honest with God. Y'all acting like God don't already know you tore it from the floor up. Y'all trying to make sure nobody finds out about you being a side piece. God already sees it, and He's all that matters. And once you stop caring about them and start caring about Him, and you start saying, God, fix whatever it is that's making me go back to where I came from. Right? What does that mean? Breaking cycles. If it don't make you happy, change it. Get to the root of it. See, the problem is we just mowing stuff. We just mowing stuff to get a temporary fix. But we got to eradicate it. We got to go on a fast. Right? We got to go on a fast. We got, there was, there's a few things in my life that ever so often I'll get like almost PTSD from it. Because I've gone through some things that, that all of a sudden, man, I'll be like, whoo. And I've really had to work on that this year because there's little things that'll trigger me. And then I'll find myself and I'll be like, oh my gosh, so even preachers go through it. Even, even your, your, your mentors go through it, right? Oh my gosh, I gotta fix this because when, what God wants to do in my life, he can't do in my life as long as I keep getting stuck on this. Fear, fear of what's gonna happen if I trust. Fear of what's gonna happen if I step out, right? Honest prayer makes prayer easy. You ain't got to say this. He don't care about your fuss, these or thous. He cares about your heart. He cares about your heart. Some things don't need prayer. Huh? Some things don't need prayer. They need discipline. You got to have discipline. You can't just be praying for God to do something and ain't got no discipline. You lazy. I'm waiting on God to bring me, bring me a job. And you ain't even been off the couch in five years. My, my whole family died of sugar diabetes while you're eating ho-hos. You got to discipline, right? What does that mean? It means that when you get out of a relationship or you've lost, the, you've lost a job for the fifth time this year, 
that you stop. Every time I walk through something that devastates me, I will always, Melvin, take a few weeks to literally stop and say, God, fix whatever it is in me that was drawn to that. But see, we don't talk about that because we want to just stay here. Y'all, being broken is easy because you don't have to worry about disappointing people. Being broken and not expecting anything of yourself because nobody else expects anything from you because you did everything they said you did in your brokenness. It's easy to get stuck there. But some things don't need prayer. They need discipline. Because God already told you what to do and you're procrastinating. Oh, we don't want to do all that. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the Holy Spirit produces. What? Huh? What does the Holy Spirit produce? This kind of fruit in our lives. If your fruit's stanky, look at the source. Because God's way, walking in God's will, healing, forgiving, the fruit will be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-doggone control. You hear me? So you got to get to a place if you're not seeing this fruit. Your money's funny. Why? Because my God said exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever ask or think. He said, press down, shaking together, overflowing. Y'all like, oh no, Christians can't be rich. What? The wealth of the wicked is stored up for me. All right, so let me hurry, 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 because I could just play with y'all forever. I was sitting on the front row, and I got this ring on. And this ring is a star, nothing special, but I like a lot of stuff, y'all know. I'm just like, let's add more. Just keep adding. What can I add? I love, like, like rings and fashion, and it gets on people's nerves, you know. And, and I don't know why, because it makes me happy. But I have this ring on right here, right? It's a, it's a star. Man, I probably paid $15 for it, sterling silver. But I kept noticing that I kept snagging. Everything I wear snags. And it never dawned on me, I just do this. You know, when you get a snag, you just push it in. <laughs> like it's going to disappear. Because you don't want to pull it because you'll get a hole. So I was just finding everywhere I wear, this ring is just grabbing everything. And so when I'm standing... There this morning, God said, you do know that nobody even notices that ring. But it's ruining your clothes. The snag that could be eradicated just like that. We hold on to the ring that nobody's even going to notice. We hold on to the walls that keep people from hurting us again. We want people to come and fight for us when they can't even fight for themselves. So we've got little bitty things. It's like little bitty mosquitoes and gnats that are just always at us. Why? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So it's the things that you don't take care of, like taking the ring off. I love that ring, but I ain't going to wear it again until I go get it sanded. So it's not that you can't fall in love again. It's not that God ain't going to put you back in ministry, but maybe he needs you to take it off for a second and he needs you to go get it sanded a little bit so that you don't keep bleeding on people that didn't cut you. That was good. Matthew 22. Let's go to Matthew 22. 34 through 40. See, it's not that God's not going to do what you want him to do. He's waiting on you to get in the position that you don't mess it up when he gives it to you. I wanted to preach, man, when I was 37 years old. I wanted to preach, to be the first preacher in my family, a woman. And I went to my daddy, and I was like, Daddy, I got a word. He said, sit down. I said, well, you let my brother preach at 23. 
He said, sit down. And I remember the more I'd go to him, come on, daddy, I got a word today. I would tell him stuff because God always drops in my spirit, stuff like that. I go, come on, daddy, listen to this word I got. He like, it's good. Don't you want to run around the house? Go sit down. But what happened was my daddy was my accountability. You got to get some people in your life that'll tell you, sit down and get the kinks worked out. But y'all run. If people don't tell you what you want to hear, you run. The other day, I put on one of my new shirts. Somebody from another minister reached out to me and said, I love you, but it is, it is, it is not the month. I'm thinking, that thing's selling a lot. They were like, you probably need to take it down this month because the enemy's going to come in and he be, we don't want nothing. You want to keep your heart right. The Bible says, don't let your good be evil spoken of, even though your heart's not there. Just not this month. This isn't a good month for it. And I'm, I'm beating around the bush. The old Kim would have been like, girl, bye. I don't care. It ain't my heart. You know what I did? I pulled over on the side of the road and was ripping it off at every social media platform I could. Why? Because if your heart is right, God will send people in your life to tell you. Oh, we don't want friends like that. Here, here, let me show you this. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. My, my point in all of that is to say, how's your heart when someone corrects you? Now, some of y'all's problem is you trying to get, you letting people that ain't never constructed nothing, constructive criticism. You, y'all listen to people that ain't ever constructed nada. And they all telling you. There's a difference in somebody that's where you want to go and somebody you know walks in the spirit. Why? Because they're fruit. Well, what's fruit? It's when you walk into a How many lives are they changing? Not what you can see, but you can remarkably see that everybody that comes in their life tore up from the floor up, they all of a sudden become boss movers. Why? Because what's in them is rubbing off on everybody. And you were created for that. You were created to be a game changer. You were created to be a hell shaker. You were created to be an incredible wife, to be an incredible husband. You were created to birth some incredible kids. But we can't get it because we're too miserable in the wait for God to do what he needs to do while we're waiting for the doors. Let's look at Matthew 22, 34 through 40. It's but when... The Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees. With his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religion. Ugh, them religious folk. He was an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher. Which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Y'all, love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. I don't care how many feet you wash. I don't care if you can prophesy to everybody that walks in this building. I don't care if you can quote every scripture under the sun. Satan could quote scriptures. When your heart's bad, you will not be blessed in what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Stop focusing on what you did wrong and focus on what you did right. When you know that you're doing everything that God's called you to do, you can't get stuck in things aren't happening fast enough because with social media, they have highlight reels. Somebody say highlight reels. And you're over here living on someone's highlight reels and it ain't nothing like they portraying it to be. I know more couples that were relationship goals that all of a sudden one day they ain't together no more. And you're like, what? My whole relationship hope was based in them. That's the problem. It was in them and not God. So in this text we see, I'm a hurry. In this text we see a lawyer 
So he comes forward, and the lawyer begins to drill him about his philosophy, about the theology. The lawyer says to him, what are the laws? And after God tells him the two laws, the lawyer is blown away. He was basically saying, you mean after all the feet washing I did, after all the preaching from the temple, from the mountaintops, and we can't do no miracles on a Sunday, you mean all the legalistic rituals, and this is the most important? Love? Love. I can love who I want to love, though, right? If they walk in smelling like cigarettes, I ain't got to love them. If I know they cheated and I Google and find out, I don't got to love them. No, he says love. What are the greatest law? Jesus says two of these commandments encapsulate all that matters to me. The most important ones are if we get these two right, guess what? We done passed the whole test. Let me tell you how. You ready? You want me to tell you how? Say yeah. The first commandment is to love the Lord your God. The most important ever is this. With all your heart, your mind, I mean with everything. God commands us to love him. Wouldn't that solve a lot of marriage problems? Huh? It would solve so many marriage problems, so many family issues. If we did what God commands us to do. With all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, everything. Even if you work on Sabbath, love him. Even if you walk through things that break your heart, love him. In a world full of thou shalt not. The priority is on thou shalt. That means I ain't got to point fingers at you. God already knows. It ain't my job to get you. It's my job to love you. It ain't my job to point out your sins. It's my job to love you. Ain't no sin greater than another sin. You hear me? It's loving like Jesus, loving with skin on it, and he will change everything else. God says, if you get the shall right, if you get the shall right, you won't have to worry about the shall nots. Come on, somebody. Where y'all at? Y'all letting it process, ain't you? If you, if you, yeah. It, see what I tell myself? I'm, I'm the queen of that. Oh, no, they just letting it sink in. That's all. They just letting it sink in. <laughs> if you get the shall right, you won't have to worry about the shall not. You will stop approaching God like he's a police officer and about to arrest you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm doing it because I love you, God. I'm doing it because when everybody walked out on me, you walked in, God. I'm doing it because I got to walk through what I'm walking through because my purpose is connected to whatever I had to fight like hell to get through. Oh. Man, if God were a woman, he would say, I'm not worried about you cheating on me. If you love God, well, y'all got to stop falling in love with his abs and her tata. But when her character stinks, you like, turn around. <laughs> Girl, sing to me. Hush, just, just, just sing to me. Turn the lights out. Because if your heart's right, you don't even think to cheat on me. If you love God with all your heart, you ain't even going to think about lying to me. If you love God with all your heart, you ain't going to need drugs to go to sleep at night. I ain't got to worry about nothing because we are both going after God and loving God with all our heart. Y'all, something about loving God with all your heart, even when they trifling, even when they're putting a knife in the front of you, even when they Judas, you'll let them sit at your table and smile the whole time. Not even out of spite. Just say, you need my presence. Because you are faker than a, all, than, a, than a zirconia. So just sit in my presence, let me rub off on you. You know what I'm saying? What a big command that is. Have you ever loved anybody like that? Have you? With all your heart. All your heart. 
I love you, Jesus. It's singing from your toes. Hello, is it me you're looking for? It's everything you do is with a passion. Why? Because I love God with all my heart, and whatever situation I'm in, I'm like a chameleon. I can just change and do what I need to do and not worry about what you're doing because the God in me is going to jump on you. I'm preaching way better than y'all clapping. I know online. Online giving me some hand emojis. Here's what God is saying. I challenge you to give all yourself in everything you do, even at Walgreens. Give it all. This is a season, not a sentence. God, I know you're making a way for me. Here's the second commandment. The first one is love the Lord your God with all your heart. Y'all ready for the second one? The second one is, the reason I started this Paradise Island off of this is because if you get these two, the rest of the month is going to be easy breezy. You hear me? Second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. Imagine how your personal relationships would change if you loved your relationships like you love yourself. Some of y'all do. That's the problem. Because we ain't falling in love with Jesus. So therefore, we're moved by our circumstances and what they say and do instead of being in love with Jesus. As forgiving as you expect others to be, are you that way? Y'all, I work on this every, I'm almost 50. We all 50 years old. And I don't know how. And the reason I preach like this is so that you ain't got to waste all the years that I did in my pride and stubbornness. When it's, in, it's simple, it's easier said than done. No, it ain't. If you get your heart right, well, I don't know if my heart's right. Yeah, you do. Because you ain't laying in your bed with insomnia. Insomnia means you ain't got no peace. Why? How you know that, Kim? It is clinical. Some of y'all holding on to some of these clinical situations. When you ain't gonna win no reward over it. Y'all fighting, fighting to hold on to that depression. Fighting to hold on to that. You are holding on to that unforgiveness and can't even remember the details. I'm mad at you, I don't know what, but we ain't talking. The church, Christians, are the worst. They kill their wounded. They compare, they, they get jealous, they uh, under, undermine you, they, what? And if you don't know who Jesus is and what God's called you to do, you will let every little offense jump on you. Isn't it funny the people who need the most forgiveness don't forgive? He, we so quick to say everybody's a narcissist. Girl, he a narcissist. He's narcissist. He's a narcissist. No, he's full of the devil. If you a narcissist, meet me after church. I will cast it out of you. We ain't gonna patty cake with the narcissist. I'll be like, get out! I don't patty cake. You ever seen those people that you want to get delivered? Do you want to get delivered? Do you want to get delivered? No, you don't. You want to stay in there a little bit longer? Okay, well, come back to me when the devil wants to get out of... No, not me. You walk up in my, in my, in, around me like... I'm like, come out! I ain't got to be burning no sage. Some of y'all be burning stage up in your house and your husband's itching. He got demons, you know what I'm saying? No, when your heart is right, you're connected to the whole point of contact. We want to get more than we give. You can't be selfish if you, be, if you love your neighbor as yourself. Maturity is supposed to make you less selfish, but it's funny how some never get it. You ever seen those people that get in those relationships since their fifth one? They've been married five times. And all of them were crazy. Could it be? 
and shoot a common denominator? They on Prozac. Why? They ain't never gonna get married again. Ever? Because you were a mess? You can't heal if you don't let God in. You coming up for prayer, but you're praying, God, don't take him out of my life. Just heal him. He has tore your tail up. He ain't never going to change. Some people change, but you always see it by their fruit. They don't have to tell you they change. You see it by their fruit. I don't want to hear what you got to say. I want to see what you do. Why? Because we ain't playing no more. I'm almost 50. We ain't patty caking. I don't dance with the devil hoping the devil changes. The devil don't change. The devil changes you. The healthiest people to love are those who are healthy and love themselves. You look like God. Love like God. I don't care if you're Republican, if you're Democrat, if you got the vaccine, or if you didn't get the vaccine. My love for you still gonna run deep. Why? Because I love God with all my heart. All right, I'm closing. He commands us to love, and if he commands you, then he's given you everything you need to do it. <laughs> Social media makes it hard because we want people to pay for what they did to us. And God is saying, let it go. You were trifling too. Let it go. Raphael, I used to, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. When I made hood and holy, I was hood and holy, okay? We did it because thank God I'm in the middle. I'm not just from the south side of heaven no more. I'm over here by Jesus now. But I used to be like, God, how are you blessing that crazy man? How are they blessed after they did that to me? He's like, just like you think you're right, they think they're right. And they think you cray-cray. So it's getting out of what they are thinking and what they're not supporting. You know why they ain't supporting you? Because they can't. Because where God's taking you, they can't get the credit. It's your time. It's your time. You got to get your heart together. You got to get your mind together. Forgetting those things that are behind. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time for love. It's your time for a million dollar bonus. It's your time to write the book. It's your time. It's your time. Not in the cute church, little. Every Sunday. No, it's my time, Sheena. Because I'm putting in the work. Because I'm putting in the work. God, expose what you got exposed in me so you can expand me. I don't care what they say about me I only care what you know about me God if you're miserable in this place and you're up one day and down one day you keep going and getting upped in all your medication now you're walking like this you can't even laugh <laughs> weight on you the weight always comes from what you're carrying that you think you're the God in he ain't moving quick enough I'm already 38 years old my daddy says sit down 39 years old sit down he got diagnosed with dementia I was like well now I'm gonna get inside a fall I was like no 
daddy didn't want you to mess it up. I had to get to a place where my validation wasn't in a mic. Because whatever your validation comes from, when it's ripped from you, when you write that first book and nobody buys it, Your confidence walks out when they walk out. He'll start at a young age, y'all, when you are sitting there watching your best friend with her mom and daddy sit around the table and they have cooked meals every night. You ain't never sit around the table. Y'all get your plate and go in your own rooms. And the enemy will start making you feel like you ain't worthy, you ain't normal, you ain't good. And then all of a sudden you'll be looking and you're like, oh my God, overnight success. The hardest thing for me is that I'm afraid that so many people look at my life and think if she can do it, I know I can. She's crazy. They never saw 15 years that I got up and walked into Bloomingdale's. And I clocked in and clocked out. I drove one hour to work and one hour home. Sitting in traffic in a hoop day, a knockoff Bentley 300 Chrysler. Smoke coming out of my car. Nobody was seeing the growth in me. And I had to still get up, and I still went to work, and I still clocked in. Y'all, the truth was, here's where a lot of the enemy gets a lot of you. God, I know that you've called me to speak in front of women. Here's what I'm telling them. It changed lives. I see myself on platforms. It changed your lives. Now I'm 40. And it still ain't changed your lives. Might as well just go lock myself in my room and drink myself to sleep every night. Because I done lost the window. And God is saying, a Zoom is a room. Uber is a pulpit. Bloomingdale's is a platform. CVS is a platform. Taking care of your kids, wiping their tail cooking supper, doing laundry, that is a platform. And those who are faithful in the little, I will give 